it's wonderful to be able to welcome you to the launch of Thy Kingdom Come 2020. It's a launch being done in a completely different way to everything we've imagined, as we are ourselves having to do everything in every aspect of our lives in many countries uh, in very different ways to that we have imagined. But one thing does not change. God is not in lockdown. God is not shut in. He's not staying at home. He is with us and his eternal purpose of calling people to know and love and become disciples of Jesus Christ does not in any way change. As the Psalms and the Old Testament says again and again, his steadfast love endures forever. So I'm particularly glad to welcome um, uh, Cardinal Vincent Nichols and Archbishop Sentamu, uh, the Archbishop of York, uh, as we begin this extraordinary moment uh, of encouraging prayer for people to know that they are called to be disciples of Jesus Christ. We know that thy kingdom come is going to happen in countries all around the world. So I'm carefully not saying good morning, because for many of you, it's, it's good evening or even good tomorrow morning. Uh, so it's wonderful to be with you. It's in whatever situation you find yourself, uh, in stresses and strains, in times of trouble, or times of great joy and celebration. Welcome to this uh, live launch of Thy Kingdom Come 2020. Um, I was just wanting to start by asking Cardinal Nichols and Archbishop Sentamu uh, to just talk for a moment about uh, prayer and praying during this time of thy kingdom come. Uh, Vincent, you've been a wonderful advocate. You've joined with thy kingdom come personally, as well as uh, leading the uh, Catholic Church in this country. What is it about it that particularly stirs your heart? Well, Justin and everybody joining in, for me, I think it's the richness of these days. I, the, the initiative is very well placed in the rhythm of our Christian life. It's well placed in these days, which the early Christians experienced with such intensity of having experienced the, the physical departure of the one they had come to love and to whom they were dedicated. And being told to wait, to wait in expectation, and doing so in that upper room, that's the image that we have, and waiting probably with a bit of uncertainty in their hearts, trusting in the promise that they've been given, not knowing how this was going to unfold. And I think there are lots of resonances in those points for us at this time. And when not sure how things are going to unfold. But we know from the whole great sweep of our Christian tradition and life is that these days of being attentive with that attentiveness of a heart that awaits the coming of a loved one, that there is a great gift. And that gift is to be the gift of the Holy Spirit, which as we breathe in, gives us the ability then to breathe out the great mission that we've received. And so for me, the, the, the beauty of thy kingdom come is where it is placed in the rhythm of our Christian life between Ascension and Pentecost. Thank you for that and that extraordinarily beautiful image, which we first find in John's Gospel of Jesus breathing on his disciples who breathe in the spirit. Uh, Archbishop Sentamu, my dear brother and colleague, you have done more about evangelism and prayer uh, in the Church of England than 
anyone else in not just recent history, but for such a long time. You've been an ex a very powerful advocate of Thy Kingdom Come from its very inception. Uh, in fact, part of the inception was with you yourself. What, why, why has this caught your sense of what God is doing? I think I was very glad at the age of 10, um, a mathematics teacher led me to Christ. And I remember praying a prayer, kneeling by my bed, asking Christ and the Holy Spirit to come into my life. When I woke up in the morning, really, I felt very different. I was able to apologize to my mom, my dad, uh, my other 12 siblings for all the wrong things I had done to them. And there was this amazing joy. So as I grew up, that promise of Jesus in the Acts of the Apostles, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you'll be my witnesses. And the places you are going to start from, from Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and even in the farthest corners of the earth. And then I was also quite struck by the end of Matthew's gospel, where Jesus, having told his disciples, go to Galilee, uh, onto that mountain, and what does he do before his ascension? Full authority, he says, in heaven and on earth has been committed to me. Go therefore to all nations, make them disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to observe all that I've told you, and lo and behold, I'm with you till the end of time. So it is this amazing presence of God in my little life that has been always asking me and empowering me to go out and tell. And from Advent, really, uh, to, to, to June 26, 2015, 16, I walked my diocese every day, you know, covering 1,859 miles. And every time we paused, we said the Lord's Prayer. We were always praying for the coming of the kingdom, as Jesus taught us in the Lord's Prayer. And I did that every day with a lot of people. So when thy kingdom come was launched, I said, Lord, you've at last answered our prayers that we're going to be a community that longs to see your kingdom. So when it was launched, I just, I just said, Jesus, Father, Son, Spirit, thank you, thank you. I think that and there again, that anchors it in, in what God has been doing over the years. Um, Vincent, some people have, I, I mean, I've, I've had this put to me, oh, this is just desperation by the church. And I said, prayer is not desperation. Desperation is when the church tries to do things without praying. Oh, yeah. uh, that is a true sign of panic. And um, I just wonder, as we sit there, there's, you, you lead the Roman Catholic Church, where two archbishops from uh, the Anglican Communion, from the Church of England, all around the world, there will be people from numerous different denominations and ecclesial groups and churches of all sorts and shapes and sizes. How do you see thy kingdom come in terms of the fractured nature of the church? What's it doing for the global church? Well, I think the I think Archbishop John has just illustrated the main gift of faith most beautifully. I mean, the first gift of faith is joy, and it, it's a joy, and and it's a it's a cry of joy, and and that is, I, I I do believe the the first, as it were, expression of praise. And okay, we're fractures. Okay, we do get very unsure about the practical next steps, and often, often, yes, I pray I pray out of a sense of need. Uh, and it is true in the sweep of human experience that when we're really up against it, we'll turn to prayer. And it's interesting that in this country, they say the number of people praying during this difficult, difficult period has trebled or something. But the essence of prayer is, is not so much, Lord, hear me, I don't know what to do, I'm in a def desperate state. But the essence of prayer is, Lord, Thank you for the gifts that you give. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the gift of faith. Thank you for the opportunity of using the few talents that have got in your service. And, and to me, uh, that's what I think holds Christians together more than anything else. 
gratitude, joy, and service. And, and I think those three come together very well at this time of the year, and therefore in this prayer. Thy kingdom come, a kingdom of gratitude, because everything we have is a gift, a, gratitude, a kingdom of joy, because we know it has its fulfillment already written in. It, Christ has paid the down payment on our salvation, on our fulfillment, and service is our response. We're given so much, let's give what we have in return, not count the cost and do it joyfully. And that's the, the underlying underground stream of the whole of the Christian family. And it's from that one stream that we all draw our energy and our willingness to work together, to be together, despite differences and despite tensions. No, it's about gratitude, joy and service. I, I think some people hearing that i mean I've, I've seen another letter this morning a lot of people writing to me as probably to to both of you saying church buildings are closed i can't go and meet god uh, and i suspect that i'll get letters in, in the next few days or at least unless we head it off i'll get letters in the next few days saying oh, how can you talk about prayer when you won't even open the church buildings or the church buildings aren't open um, and our answer is, my answer has been, the buildings have out of necessity been closed, but the church is very open. I just wonder, uh, Archbishop of Santa Maria, how, how you would comment on that. What's your experience, particularly in the province of York? Is the church closed? The buildings are, but Jesus was very clear, where two or three are gathered, I am in their midst. And, you know, in this conversation we're having, we are three of us, Jesus is very much present. You know, that, that, that um, blessing which was um, arranged by um, Tim Hughes in Birmingham in Gas Street, where they invited all Christians to be joining in to pray a blessing. And it said, our buildings may be closed, but the church is very much alive because it is people. Certainly buildings are never asked to provide hospitality, care for other people. But actually, unless the prayer in the home is strong, you're not going to get it very strong when the buildings reopen. So Christ is very much present. And for me, prayer is really two verses that are powerful. In Romans 8, verse 27, St. Paul writes, we don't know how to pray, but the Spirit who searches the mind of God intercedes for us with size too deep for words. So the Holy Spirit is already praying. And then in Hebrews, you know, um, you know, chapter seven, verse 24, Christ lives ever to intercede for us at the right hand of God. Isn't this amazing that the Holy yeah. Spirit is praying for us? Jesus is praying for us. He is in us, around us, everywhere we are going. So it isn't a desperate thing. It's actually to get in touch with God. I live by a river, Ouz, which often tends to flood. And my image of prayer is that it's like a river. It is flowing. And all you've got to do is to join in to this living water so that you <laughs> are caught up in this marvelous overflow of the spirit. So I, 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 I look forward. I mean, I'm, I was supposed to be having my farewell service in York Minster on the 7th. It won't happen. But that doesn't mean I can't simply say to people, you've been marvelous, I've enjoyed your life. So friends, let us realize the Holy Spirit is praying for us, Jesus is praying for us, he's in us, around us, encouraging us, leading us, so we're joining in in the prayers of the Spirit and of Christ. Isn't that amazing? It is amazing. Justin, may I just put in a little word there? Um, I'm very struck. Every morning, you know, and the big doors of Westminster Cathedral, somebody's placing fresh flowers. Ah. And that's a very eloquent gesture. And I, I thoroughly agree with everything that we're saying. But a church, the church buildings are the, the gift of love to the Lord. And we put only in our church buildings the best that we can. So the being open is important and, and we long for that. Uh, but 
it needs the prayer in the home and the, the, the liveliness of the church in order to enrich them. So I, I just want to register, you know, a longing for the day when uh, that house of God, uh, where the, the presence of the prayers of people, which have seeped into the stones for generations, is again part of the enrichment of our prayer. I couldn't agree more. There's a, a, a beautiful church, uh, St. Martin's, just uh, near uh, Canterbury Cathedral, which is where Augustine himself in 597 uh, uh, first went. It has bricks that date from Roman times. And as you say, prayer has seeped into the walls for almost 2,000, you know, the, the greater part of 2,000 years. And, and I long to be able to be there, to be in the cathedral, to, to have those great services again. But I think your point earlier about service and joy and thanks, I'm hearing that buildings are open, but they're open for service. Not necessarily services, but feeding. I'm hearing of sure, yeah. a church that is feeding 2,000 people a week. Oh. And I think in our conversation, just as we turn to prayer, we have the material for thanks, we have the material for joy, we have the material for praying for people's service and for praying for the reopening of the buildings, which we all long for as soon as we possibly can. Yeah, but, so but in, but... instead of just talking about prayer, why don't we pray? We've got about eight minutes, seven or eight minutes, I think. So um, we can just pray around. I'm sure we can discipline ourselves, not for one of us just to pray for eight minutes. Even I can do that just about. And, um, and why don't we spend a little time in prayer, picking up those themes and praying for this 10 days of thy kingdom come. Uh, so let us pray and at the end, uh, when we get to the moment where we have to stop, I'll, I may interrupt someone and we will say the Lord's Prayer together. And I think we might say it in the traditional form, which um, I think many of us... Um, uh, uh, but I think I'm just going to ask... John ask wants to, to, to finish yeah. what he wants to say and then we'll go straight into prayer. Yeah, I was just I was just going to say certainly uh, I've always looked at our church buildings as places of hospitality. You need a home yeah. place and they're places of hospitality, but when they are not open, much as we are longing, I'm also reminded of the vision of the beloved disciple John in the book of Revelation. At near the end, he said, and there was no temple in the city. Because the Lord God Almighty is its temple and gives it life. So we need the balancing out of the images. Otherwise, we can think that actually brick and mortar, whatever it is, is the reality and the essence of the thing. The essence are Christians who, in fact, in some of our churches here in the diocese, they're open because that's where the food banks are. And they're doing a marvelous service. But the vision, the vision is actually on the whole grandeur of God who also is seen in the rest of our universe. Thank you. Let us turn to this extraordinary God in, to whom as sinners, as weak, as just people seeking strength, we can come in confidence. So let us pray. I'll start with a brief prayer and introduce the Lord's Prayer at the end. Come, Holy Spirit, as we turn our hearts afresh to you and open our minds and spirits, come and fill us afresh and guide us in our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. God, our living Father, I thank you every day for the gift of faith that you chose to give to me. I thank you that I can speak of the mystery of your life. I can speak of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I thank you for the joy that this faith gives to me and to so many people. I thank you for this gift 
I thank you that I long for your kingdom. I thank you that I know its path in the person of Jesus. And I ask today particularly for the gift of your spirit that I'll have eyes to see the treasure of your kingdom hidden in the field of the world. Mm. That's where your spirit blows. That's where your spirit gives life, where it gives growth in the field of the world in so many different, maybe unconscious, but generous ways. I thank you that we've seen that treasure so vividly in the last few weeks. And I pray that I and all the disciples of Jesus will always have eyes to see and to appreciate and to nurture your gifts hidden in the field of our world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear. Hear. Amen. Amen. Father, I ask that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in communion with all your saints, that we entrust one another and all our life to Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the five people I've been praying for, that during thy kingdom come, they will come to a living faith in Christ, mm. especially for Mark and Liz and the other three. Today I ask that with my brothers, we will be so filled with your spirit that will be a blessing to others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give you grateful thanks, O oh Lord, that you have poured out your spirit on your church, that from this day of ascension in which you physically left your disciples as they waited, they experienced the outpouring of fire and wind that led them out in great power. We thank you for your church around the world. We bless you that we are part of an extraordinary body. We pray for its unity and we pray for its renewal. This season of thy kingdom come. We pray for your spirit to fall in places where the church is persecuted, is suffering and is struggling in natural disaster, in conflict, in hunger, in economic deprivation. We pray, pray for places like the South Pacific, where the church is leading the struggle on climate change. We pray for churches in the poorest parts of this country, where they are the resort to those who are short of food, short of hope, short of comfort, short of friends. We bless you that all this is your work that you have bought your church for such a time as this and that you equip us and we pray that in these next 10 days you will equip us afresh for we acknowledge our weakness our division and our fragility lord in your mercy hear, hear our prayer father we struggle to understand what our lives will be like when this pandemic has passed and we begin to reassemble. Help us not to go backwards. Help us to learn deep lessons of how interconnected we are, how very much in the one boat we are, how very much we have a loving duty to make sure nobody is excluded, nobody callously thrown overboard. Help us to build afresh this broken world of ours so that it reflects a bit more the kingdom that you give us, the kingdom that you are, the kingdom that you want us to be, the kingdom of love and justice, the kingdom of charity and compassion, a kingdom in which everyone from the moment of their conception to their death, is respected as a child to whom you have given life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yeah.
loving spirit support and sustain those who are anxious those who are fearful those who are sick those who have been brought low may they find comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in christ jesus Holy Spirit of God, rekindle the fire of love in the hearts of your people, that they will have the boldness to be witnesses to the marvelous saving grace in Christ. Cleanse us, forgive us, renew us, and fill us with your joy. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. So we commit ourselves and these this time together to you afresh, O Lord. We remember that in your kingdom there is neither status nor rank. There are simply those who are called and loved disciples who follow you. Renew in all taking part in these times of prayer that discipleship. And so we pray together in faith the prayer that the Lord Jesus himself called us to and around the world, each in our own language, as we say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, your kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory ever and ever. Amen. Amen. So to all who have joined with us, let us remember that it's been an extraordinary moment. We have, until 40 years ago, the idea of the Cardinal Archbishop praying with the two Archbishops of York and Canterbury in public would have been seen as quite shocking but it is simply the call of christ may you join with others in this wonderful time of prayer i hope and trust that you will participate fully in thy kingdom come you'll find it on the web at www.thykingdomcome.global and you'll find everything there that you need if you want to get involved May God bless you and keep you in his holy and wonderful name and in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, the ever glorious Trinity. Amen. Amen.